Welcome back to DuckTales Remastered. So, so next we're gonna go to the African mines. Okay. So, uh, next is... I just said... What treasure do you think you'll find there, Uncle Scrooge? Only the largest gem known to history. Oh, just that. Uh, uh, not quite sure that's how it works. Pretty sure there's only liquid in the center. Well, and then, and then Scrooge died upon. Uh, uh, funny story yeah. about that. Drove about that little spirit uh, after we're done with the intro. Also, Slug. Slug is loading. Highlights. This is the place. I can feel all okay. the Okay. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Uh, Gyro, I thought you said this winch was brand new. It was. It's an unbreakable diamond tether, Mr. McDuck. Yeah, sure. You what? You want me? Westlife, uh, Westlife song, how they were unbreakable, and look how they turned out. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Run away, run away. Yeah, what is it with Europeans saying that something is either impregnable, unbreakable, or Java, Even Hiroi Koraki says it uh, for part four. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you fasted mine. I mean, I know we just went through Transylvania, where we ha came face to face with a few ghosts and a few mummies, but I say that there's no such thing as ghosts. <laughs> Arbitrary skepticism, ahoy. Checked. Well, this is this, is, this is typical Scrooge. Like he won't to. No, 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 no! They literally just ran into ghosts and mummies. They're he's being arbitrarily skeptical. Well, to be fair, Jova, you can start this level before everyone else. So not 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 not, not just that, Jova. But uh, the thing is about the comics is that a lot of times the comics, well, there was continuity. Like for example, though those the various encounters between uh, Scrooge and Flint um, Flint Heart. Uh, uh, Contests of richness. Yeah. I mean, glom gold. Yeah, glom gold. Um, well, there was some loose continuity whenever the writers felt like it, especially during when Carl Barks was writing them. After Carl oh. Barks, after Carl Barks, the continuity of the of the Scrooge comics is a bit all over the place. It functions more like an anthology, similar to the Silver Age Batman stories. Yeah, however, that was then. This is now. I mean, even before this, he's got up against. It, trust again, me. I Trust me, Joe, you'd be surprised. If my country does this t still to this day, and I don't understand really why. This is again. There's a lot of stuff well, about your country that I don't understand anyway. So. Which is weird because I don't even recall him being an arbitrary skeptic in the original show. No. Granted, yeah. So I have no idea where this whole he doesn't believe in ghost thing is coming from. I mean, he's uh, practically it, made a life out of these it's mystical probably, artifacts. It's it's mostly the thing that, oh, I want money and well, will not to let this get in the way. Yeah, that's fine enough. They just didn't need to include the arbitrary skepticism, but whatever, it's water under the bridge and we're going well below that. <laughs> okay, now here's a bit of an issue with this game. The placement of enemies here when you clearly have to pogo. Yeah, why? Because you're gonna get And also the, um, the invincible invincibility coin that was before also seemed a bit way Oh, and they just started. Did the goats have it? No, I'm telling you kids for the last time. There are no ghosts in this mine. Okay, now And we're telling there. you again, you fought some earlier. <laughs> Oops. I'll tell you what scared them away. Overactive imaginations. <laughs> all of them? I don't think there's enough hallucinogenic gas for all No, 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 here's the Ed Cannon drove. We entered the spooky, super, totally super spooky realm that is in as of also below. Yeah. <laughs> but isn't Seriously. that in Paris? Well, who are you to judge? Yeah. Also, anyway, um... Like uh, well, you were mentioning, Jova, about the gemstone. Basically, due to the process of how gemstones form, they can actually form uh, in the um, in the middle of a, of a mantle of Earth. Of the, but but it's we in need the center, though. Hold on, but we need something to be encased in, uh, uh, specifically cobalt, because that is actually resistant to the temperature and the pressure. So that allow allows. Um, 
start to grow inside in turn uh gemstone can grow thanks to the immense pressure that is uh, at that uh, at that quote uh and thus sometimes when these cobalt uh, uh pieces actually emerge and actually get founded uh, way later on and that's why you get some like geodes so yeah, I guess. Oh, well, they're suggesting that it's a dead center, like from the very center. Of yeah, the no, no. Like... Okay, this is taking more of a journey, journey to the center of your approach, where oh, there's just you know the earth is just caving. Anyway, you were saying, Pedro? Oh yeah, like Theo just said, much like in journey to the center of the earth, basically you're almost likely just going down with some alternate paths here in between. But you're most most of the time you're just trying to go down so you can find what the hell is the cause of all the ruckus. Surprisingly, Disney never tried to do an animated adaptation of Journey to the Center of the Earth. I think for very, very maybe potential. Didn't they do the live action one with Brendan Fraser? I remember Japan made oh, one. That was Disney. Yeah, pretty sure that was. Let me check. Oh. <laughs> that was terrible. I really, oh. I sincerely hope that wasn't Disney. Do you prefer the original Journey to the Center of the Earth? The 50s version, it's dated as fuck, but it's more enjoyable. Let's see, they made the ride, let's see if they made the movie. Wasn't that more like Universal, I think? Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, um, it, was, um, it was at Disney, not Universal, actually. Yeah, it oh. was at Disney. Still fun though. Indeed. Have you wrote it to you? No, Jova, we don't have those official team car here. Well, neither, neither do we. I was in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> well, good for you, Shiro. I went to Attica or Orlando to get a theme park like that. Mm hmm. Yeah, we don't have any, like, big theme parks here in the UK. The closest thing to me would be probably Disneyland Paris, and even then. Uh, it's no long do. shot and my current condition. We, yeah. I know we do, but I don't think we have anything on the scale of Disney or Universal. We've got Alton Towers. The closest one we've got is Alton Towers. Yeah. Oh, poor, poor plant. And 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 lucky me, because um, because it's the it's in, the, it's in the same county I live in. Yay. Hmm. Okay, so yeah, it turns out the movie I'm thinking of, no, that was not made by Disney. That was made by New Line Cinema. Oh, by the way. Oh, so Warner that, Bros. Technically. That Warner, by the way, that movie was made in 2008, you know, to odd reception. Yeah. And yet, we got a Golden sequel Compass. later on in 2000 freaking 12. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Sorry, what, what, uh, what film are you on about again? Journey to the Center of the Earth starring Brendan Fraser. Oh, Frazier. right. And then they got a sequel with The Rock. Yep. The sequel stars Dwayne Johnson, Michael Caine, Josh Hutcherson, Vanessa Hudgens, Louise Guzman, and Kristen Davis. Brendan Fraser, who's that? And it was also released <laughs> by one of others. Now, fun fact, though. Apparently, Disney originally were working on a Journey to the Center of the Earth film, but they weren't happy with the appearance of it. So it got turned into the Atlantis movie. Oh, uh, well, that makes so much sense, considering the first half of reeks of that. Uh... Huh, how about that? By the way, fun fact, apparently the 2008 film starring Brendan Fraser, it's uh, it's apparently actually a sequel to the yeah, original Yeah, 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 it's a sequel because we reference uh, both Arne Saknussem and uh, The Professor. Right, at least, um, right, at least Brendan Fraser had a decently received film in 2008, because remember his other big film that year? What? Food Fight. No, 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 Mommy Tomb Wait, of the Brendan Dragon. Brendan Fraser was in Food Fight? No, I got confused, no, no, sorry. No, 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 no. 2008 also had the Mummy Tomb of the Dragon Emperor. Uh. So, um, Tia, what exactly do you not like about the Journey to the Center of the Earth film? With Brennan Fraser, the first of all, the fact that it's a sequel, obviously, which you don't really need, just adapting the original book is fine enough. Uh, second, the fact that you do so much weird shit and had so many stupid moments for the sake of lulz. There are some creative ideas, like with the temperature and some particular effects, but it's not enough to save it. But Tio, isn't it cool that at the center of the Earth is actually a T-Rex? That's the big secret? It's a T-Rex? <sighs> Just a T-Rex, yeah. A T-Rex that somehow managed to survive without food and water, now that I'm thinking. And There's a time and a place. And, and apparently the, um, the center of the Earth actually in that movie is actually the one close to Stromboli. Go figure. Yeah. It's the cluster, don't you? 
Of so, course it is. Bruce is pogoing like his shovel, mate. Your um your meta references over are um all well, better than mine, so <laughs> I well, remember, Gleaves, I uh, forgot if I mentioned already, but uh, there was um, a Mickey Mouse game for the Nintendo 3DS uh, made by, uh, I forgot which team, but published by Sega. Um, amongst other things, you could recruit in that some Disney characters, Disney yeah, characters, one of the most good. Yeah. yeah, and in this attack was uh, the Kane. So we kept for that. Uh, Okay, I mean, Scrooge, be Scrooge a... using the cane has become surprisingly iconic for video game culture in general. He's gotta be an assist in Kingdom Hearts 3. <laughs> well, he was Although... in 2, so they wouldn't, it wouldn't be that and much of a stretch. Yeah, and verbi and verbi sleep. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I mean, like, well, I mean, I'm saying it's about time he actually gets to be in on some of the action. Well, if anything is anything to go by, Square doesn't really know how to do uh, something with him. Uh, remember, in Burbay's Leap, he actually gives the ticket to Ventus for free. The real Scrooge will never even bother to do something like that. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I, don't I, I, I don't know, Theo. Maybe it was just one of those cases where someone offered him the tickets and he didn't oh. care. I mean, no, he, he can no, make no, 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 no. Remember uh, what says also in 2, well, Donald says in 2, before the entire shenanigan, Scrooge actually was collaborating with Mickey uh, on a traveling uh, airship company. And uh, promoting Journey to Disney Town was one of his things. And here's the thing, even for the sake of promoting, giving away free tickets, especially free in a row, to a random stranger is an impossible part. For, especially for Scrooge. Anyway, what the fuck are these? Is there no end to this madness? I don't know. Balls! <laughs> ah. So what in the world do you suppose those are? I don't know. I don't know! Uh, how did you get here and why are you here? The junior book to guide shows them a secret shortcut. <sighs> Seems Did like I it, yeah. I mean, that's literally the go-to excuse for how they can do stuff, the Junior Woodchuck Guide. Yeah, but you, but this time you don't even have an excuse. Yeah, sure you do. Yeah. <laughs> just, just hope you don't become hostages again. Well, it kind of usually is something like, uh, see, the, 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 see, one of the problems with uh, the older incarnations of, uh, again, aside from Quack Pack, we're no, we don't talk about Quack Pack. Um, oh, have you guys done Quack Pack for the channel yet? No, and I no. don't want to be in that. Really? Anyway. What's so bad about Quack Pack? It's, it's, not, it's generic 90s attitude coolness thing. Oh, wait, 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 hold on, you're talking about the show... Yeah, yeah, the show. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I thought you were talking about a game attached to it. No, no, no. I don't think there was one. Anyway, was what I mean is oh, that... Oh, yeah, I remember Quack Pack. That was back when they had Huey, Dewey, and Louie be teenagers, I think. Yeah, yeah and it... Uh, see, the thing is, it, like, again, Quack Pack aside, the older incarnations of Huey, Dewey, and Louie have always been kind of blandish. Again, like I said, they were always basically just the same just the same character multiplied by three. And all they really did, even in the comics, was just spout uh, ex exposition from the Junior Woodchuck's Guide and just be there to provide some kind of commentary for what Scrooge or Donald were doing. Mo the, 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 protagonists were, the protagonists were basically just Donald and or Scrooge, and the, nephew, and the nephews were just there to... Oh, that's just cheap. The, the nephews were mostly just there to comment on stuff. They were pretty much kind of bland characters, which is why I really appreciate what they did with them in the, in the reboot. Uh, yeah, they did, yeah so, I, mean, I, thought, I mean, I think Huey got some times to stand up because, you know, leader of the pack, but yeah. Well, yeah like, I think my case, that depended on mostly on the artist, but continue, Pedro. Well, <laughs> it, it depended on the artist and not the writer. So, that's a, lot, a, lot of, a lot of times the artists were also the writers here. Yeah, well, the uh. well, that's just the thing. I'm, uh, that's just the thing, too. Uh, I don't know anything about Italian exclusive comics, obviously. But, but, but usually, well, again, they, they were usually import exported uh, quite frequently, but whatever, keep going. Um... Like, so the whole nephews needing rescue thing, actually, it did happen a few times here and there in the comics as well. So this is not exactly unexpected for um, 
for fans of these characters anyway. So again, this was before uh, this was before the they got a much better improved characterization in the reboot. So mm -hmm. not to say that they couldn't have their awesome moments in the original show. They did, but not as often as in the reboot. Like what I said, that, Shiri? so go ahead. Yes, Shiri. Right? Shiri? No, I just said few and far in between. Yeah, yeah. few far in between. Yeah, yeah. For the most part, they were just the same character. All three of them, really. They, they didn't really have Huey much distinguishing have personalities. That, that, yeah, Huey did have some things that set him out different from the other two. Oh, but shoot. Yeah. In regards to Louie and Dewey, I don't oh, remember boy. any what difference in each tree. You, what's the meaning of all this? Oh, hi, uh, Frank Welker. Well, this is a nightmare. Who's doing a pretty good, that guy in who was... In case you forgot uh, in which particular console era this was developed. Mm hmm Falls. Why do I keep thinking there's a duck in this universe called Tui? I don't know. <laughs> You're thinking of Banjo Tui? <laughs> Overblown fuzzball. So Frank Walker's the one voicing this guy. Which is supposedly this king of these bold things that recite in the center. Yeah, this was definitely an NES game. It's always weird hearing when it's always weird when Frank Walker gets to do a voice that isn't deep baritone or an animal voice, like Normally, he's known for his deep, more menacing voices instead of his higher-pitched ones. Hmm. Like, normally, when I hear a voice like this, I'd expect, oh, Jim Cummings, but, eh. Frank Weller well, we went around the it. Uh, I forgot, um, Pedro. For a fight, for a fight, for the fight like this, so did we change anything particularly from the NES not, version? Not, not well, really. Not really. It's basically the same thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Straight down to how he summons his buds for help, too. <laughs> Reminder of it, the, the school just interrupted apparently some Olympic uh, event. Oh, for Jesus. a second I thought the time was running out or something. <laughs> There's no time, I believe. So. Oh, thank God. Yeah, surprisingly enough, this was one of the NES titles, and especially from Capcom, that did not have a timer. Makes sense because it was a Metroidvania slash collectathon sort True. of, you know. Impl implementing time limits with those was not always the best option. If well, it, it was save the and game game as well. Gameplay. Oh, yeah. Like, among amongst all the bullshit difficulties, the time the time limiting Ghost and Goblin is the biggest one to me. Anyway. There we go. Uh, the land? Stop these infernal games. You're causing earthquakes, scaring off my workers, and ruining my equipment. It's nigh impossible <laughs> to mine for diamonds. Diamonds? Ah, mm -hmm. diamonds. Like this one. Though the particular one I'm after is a fair bit bigger. Oh, you refer to garbage rocks. Of course. Uh, one man's trash is literally another man's treasure here. Yeah, this type of plot was actually actually, actually very common in a lot of comics. Uh, Not just that to you, but this was also the plot of the Amazonian uh, jungle bit in this game. You know, and it turns out the Royal Scepter was just the Royal Back Scratcher. Yeah. I hope that um, I hope that that back scratcher got a thorough cleaning before Scrooge sold it off. Doesn't know. <laughs> Yay! There we go then. So, what's the moral of today? Uh, no moral. Um, no, 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 you first of, in the eyes of the beholder. If, and, if you hear uh, goes to dig through the center of the earth. <laughs> That's one way I hide from a ghost, but I can just go through the... <laughs> Never mind, then. <laughs> there we go. Gee, Uncle Scrooge, you mean there weren't any ghosts down there after all? That's right. It was like a Scooby-Doo episode, then. I can't do the excellent. Uh, giant floating balls, it's not really a rational explanation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm, do I'm with you on this one. <laughs> Have any of you seen this? Never mind.
Hey Trippers, have you ever heard of Scooby Doo before? Different company. Um, Except well, for that one time when, for some reason, they showed Scooby on a Disney yeah, Channel, and I saw Hannah Montana literally reference Scooby Doo. Like, it doesn't, 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 the doesn't matter. Just, it doesn't matter. Just will probably hold them soon anyway. Probably. <laughs> anyway, oh, you want, you're gonna show some things of the gallery? Uh, but basically, I wanted to show a specific uh, thing. Okay. Oh, so it's got what, what, the eight-bit work as well. Yeah, exactly. Not just that, but uh, you can actually listen to the eight-bit uh, music in here. So okay, so here's an example of how uh, brilliantly um, Jake Kaufman appeared the music. So this is, uh, the, of course, the version that we all know from Transylvania. Uh, you mean the jungle page? Oh, yeah, this the jungle level. Yeah, that's it. Uh, sorry, misspoke. Jungle level. There you go. Now let's okay. listen. Now let's listen to the original. To the original version, for comparison's sake. <laughs> Come on, Pedro. Uh, click X. If oh, you maybe mind. you just wanted to make listen a bit more. Yeah. Got too caught up. Let me check who was the composer of the original. It was a Capcom composer, one of those. Yeah, I think, I think, I think it was the one of Mega Man. Manami Matsume? Oh, yeah, I, I think that so. Wouldn't be the first, me. It wouldn't be the first time that we've heard her music alongside Jake Kaufman's like, you know, Shovel Knight, too. Composer? No, Hiroshige Todamura. Ah, what else Let me check. do you do? I'm, I'm checking right now. IMDB. One minute. He worked... Oh! He, his works were mostly unknown and very few in between, very few. He worked for Rayforce, Dinorex, The Ninja Kids, Quiz HQ, and 1943 Midway Kaizen. Oh, Jesus, oh, okay. what, a what a terrible resume. Anyway, mm -hmm. this is the 8 bit version of, uh, the, of Transylvania, the, the Transylvania the theme. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Jacob and really did uh, outdid himself with this. Now let's come. Now let's compare. It's weird because these uh, these Japanese composer did a really great job with this uh, with this game. I mean, the, yeah. uh, the, especially with the moon theme, which will be you know showcased in another part. But, That's one uh, thing I'll give Capcom credit for. They were definitely always good with getting the best music out of the systems they venued from. Mm -hmm. I mean, hey, they even were the ones responsible for Shantae existing with that Game Boy one, and they had Jake Kaufman do the music for that. I, I can, although I can imagine it being a bit harder for them to do, considering they were limited by sound chips. I bet they were, I bet they were, I bet they were breathing a sigh of relief when they went on the PlayStation. Most likely. Although when it came to PlayStation Capcom soundtracks, for the most part, they seemed to be a bit. Off, aside from Mega Man X6's. There's a good reason for that. It's because often they kept them on level with the SNES music bond. I think the music sounds like the one of Mega Man because it's using the same 8-bit um, font. So. There's one thing, actually one thing I never understood. How is it that Mega Man X6, the most rushed Mega Man game in the whole series up to that point, had the best soundtrack out of the out of the PS4. Yeah, best soundtrack. Uh... Oh, no, I... no clue, Libs. I, I I'm not quite sure. Know. I called it. I'm not quite sure. I call X Six's soundtrack the best of the X games. To me, well, it's definitely the best one of the PS1 games. I think. I um, don't know. Yeah, I'm gonna disagree. Like, come on. P from the I've listened to a few tracks from X4 and X5, and I'm hard pressed to remember any of them. Zero uh, speed from X4? That's your preference. Mm -hmm. uh, Zero no. speed from X4? No, can't remember that one. Um, and for once, I'm not actually, I'm not going to blame my crap memory this time. Okay, I'll blame it a bit, but still. How many times have you actually played all those games? Or are you using them? them? Unfortunately, unfortunately, Jova, because, um, because of, you know, it being hard to find and um, also me not using emulators and also the fact that they aren't on the European PlayStation Store as of this recording. And I haven't been able to play them, but I have been able oh. to use YouTube to listen to them. So, wait, wait, wait. You're telling me that the Jacob and create an 8-bit version for the yeah. the new stage he created? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just for the sake of... Well, remember, Taylor, there's, 
Well, he's remember. Off of 8-bit, he? well, well, remember, Teo, he he had to because there's an option to play with the 8-bit music. So. Mm -hmm. It's like how in Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver, when they, they made new tracks for those, they did 8-bit versions of those too. That's a nice touch. And I guess he was not too difficult for him because he was working on Shovel Knight around this period. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's definitely his imprint. Not to mention, I mean, Jack Kaufman already had composed the, the soundtrack for the first chapter anyway, so it's not like 8-bit music was something new to him anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, there you go. I have to wonder that's which a... which of them he composed first, the modern one or the 8-bit one? Hmm. Yeah, he probably composed the modern ones first. Well, I, I don't, I'm no expert in music, but one thing that I noticed is that a lot of modern music, uh, thanks to the tempo and the rhythm that they have, it can be potentially, ideally, be easily translated into 8-bit, uh, you know, in, mm -hmm. uh, in a formulaic state. That's so, kind of how a lot of uh, music artists use stuff anyway. Like, I mean, seriously, I mean, I go, you like, remember how... I mean, um, the guideline, if it, it, it has to work uh, on this type of scenario. Usually That's the way probably why when it comes to remixes of songs, like there is no shortage of 8-bit remixes of random songs over the past yeah. few years. Yes, Joel? Usually the way it goes is like, well, they make the music first and then they downgrade it. You know, case in point being when Josh Mansell um, released the uncompressed versions of the Crash Bandicoot tunes, which, you know, how they sounded before they were put onto the PlayStation font. That's pretty much how it... Yeah, before they had to compress them. We only the now get to some of that process oh. nowadays. Oh, so it's kind of like... Uh, use music more better. Oh, so it's kind of like I'll... the Nights Into Dreams perfect album, you mean? So how come, how come Crash had to have this music compressed, yet Spyro didn't? I don't know. PlayStation was really used. And anyway, you... Um, anyway, yeah, see you for the next part, everybody. See ya. Or the Himalaya, see ya. See ya.